No Nation. Welcome in to another and a special episode of the Renegade Rundown post Christmas. I hope everybody out there uh, in Knoll land and even uh, extended out there to Big 12 Mafia land um, and everybody else had a Merry Christmas out there. We're so glad to have you in here to have a little fun. We're going to talk a little bit conference realignment, talk a little bit about breaking the grant of rights, Florida State um, filing suit against the ACC. Um, we'll also have to, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. We're going to talk quarterback for the Orange Bowl and more opt-outs and stuff later on. Um, but introducing Big 12 Mafia right here. He has a big time YouTube channel. Go check that out. Our guy, Nathan. Uh, welcome to the show, Nathan. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the invitation. I, I appreciate everybody. Happy holidays. So I'm glad to be here. And also right below me in the four square here, we have Danielle Kelly. If you've been a Florida State fan for long or um, listened to the radio around Tallahassee and Jacksonville area, you know, Miss Danielle Kelly. She is actually an attorney at law. Um, thank you for joining us, Danielle. We're real excited to really crack into this thing now that it's actually happening. It's actually happening. I'm glad to be here with you guys. Absolutely. How are you doing, Jen? Jen is like, she is one of those, she's that friend you want to have. Um, she is that ride or die. Um, so let the world know, what do you got going on this um, post-Christmas afternoon? Well, I did a, um, an emergency road trip. I am coming live from Louisville, Kentucky today. Um, came up from Memphis to help my best friend move home. She's moving back to Memphis. Um, she needed a truck driver for her U-Haul truck, so here I am. Yeah, she couldn't reach care the pedals, the so I'm here to do it. She is, she is four nine. I am six feet, and here we go. Yeah, Jen doing what it takes to have a re a homecoming <laughs> with her friend and get them to the house. So that's that's pretty awesome, and and right in her wheelhouse. But let's get started on this talk, man. Conference realignment. Uh, we kind of we hinted at it. We talked about it a little bit the last show, but um, I think it's underplayed in the national media and talking heads kind of talking about this thing. Uh, I think there's a lot of this narrative of FSU's crying and all this stuff. They signed the contract. They signed the grant rights, all this stuff. But they just don't realize how under the rest all this stuff got done back in 2012 and 2016, on and on throughout the years. And kind of they don't know the whole John Swafford, Chad Swafford story. Um, so that's what we kind of, we want to start off with. And, and it's pretty wild. If you go all the way back to the very beginning of this thing, 2008, that is when SEC went full bore, uh, you know, going for getting those tier three, tier two and tier one rights to be worth everything to start really making a real production. All of a sudden ESPN, um, you know, these different things, they're, they're getting their stuff done at a high level. Well, ACC, for some reason, they don't boot Raycom and move up to that higher level of production. Somehow, for some reason, Raycom sticks with the ACC. And you see the SEC climb, like, just, just crazy stuff. But with John Swafford and Chad Swafford, it was this kind of thing uh, where it was that or nothing. That was the only deal there was ever going to be. Um, but anyways, take it from there, man. Who? <laughs> uh, Nathan, man. You, you want me to go first? Yeah, okay. well, I figure, man. Um, yeah, so, again, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. You guys Absolutely. are in a great position to be successful going forward. Being the first one out the door, uh, we have been saying on our show and on Twitter for months and months that if Clemson didn't take it, take his first opportunity to leave, that there's a good chance that they get sort of left behind. And so I think this is where Florida State is going to be real successful. Um, you guys have been planning this for well over a year. Uh, none of this stuff is a, a, a very sudden shock. And Florida State fans that I know are not surprised by this move. Um, they, they had hoped that maybe it might happen this last summer after the Pac-12 literally blew up. They thought, oh, maybe the Florida State thing could happen right afterward. But I, I believe that the choice to wait is – is paid a couple dividends. First of all, the college football playoff committee has basically given them an excuse to leave the ACC. Uh, they've said an undefeated ACC school, doesn't matter if they have a starting quarterback or not, you're not in with the big leagues in the Big Ten and the SEC. That's flat out what they're saying to your face. So they give you that 
uh, sort of PR high, higher more moral moral ground, right? Where you can say, uh, hey, you guys kind of force us to do this move. So that gives them some good PR bust. Then the second half of it is, hey, there's some legal maneuverings here. And I want to hear what Danielle says about these. But uh, with the contract and the way it works, you know, what is the chance that this contract just disappears, uh, uh, let alone uh, ceases to exist in 2027? Um, I, the three breakdowns I saw about it was there is a distinct possibility, maybe 15 or 20 percent. But if the ACC decides to fight um, uh, FSU tooth and nail all the, all the way to the end, that the gore could disappear and there is no media deal. So that would give ACC no control over the schools that leave. And now all of a sudden it's a jailbreak. So you guys are in a great position. I think Clemson made a huge mistake not being first, at least not uh, not going with Florida State. I think they should have done that. And uh, who knows where they end up now? Yeah, he brought so a good I, point I, up. Oh, go ahead, Jen. Oh, no, I was going to say I 100% agree with Nathan. I was extremely surprised that Clemson <clears throat> maybe not just didn't make a statement, but were as silent as they were. And you're not even hearing leaks yeah. that they're working on something. And that is crazy to me. Um, but it's also maybe a little telling because it might say they don't have somewhere to go. Right, right. And that's exactly what we were all thinking that. Um, and also, guys, uh, the Miami silence is just as loud. It's deafening, isn't it? Yeah, I 100% but... agree with that. I think the Miami noise, Greg Flugar, who, of course, is a friend of your show and my yeah. show, he's had some information that maybe Miami is trying to move up. And in my opinion, they're trying to force themselves onto the stage yep. to be relevant. But in mm -hmm. my opinion, why would, for instance, a Big Ten take Florida State and uh, Miami? It makes absolutely no sense uh, to me. Now, that's just me. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not Greg. I don't have the contacts that Greg does. But it, exactly. uh, it makes no sense for the Big Ten to go down there and need two schools in Florida. What really makes sense is they get one either in North Carolina or Virginia or, you know, even potentially Clemson, Florida State Clemson, it could still be an appeal. But I just don't, they don't have their own stadium. Miami's been down for a few years now, and I don't know. I just, that does, does it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I guess a few is 25, but that's fine. We'll, we'll go with a few. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, Guys, man. Miami fans, I know y'all are going to be mad at me in the comments. I got it, I got it. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'll get Daniel in here, but I do absolutely agree with you. I think the silence from them, and I really, really think, um, one that Florida state doesn't necessarily need a dancing partner, right? but if they do, um, it's going to be, I, for me, I don't see Florida state rolling out or rolling out the red carpet for Miami. I just don't, I really don't. I don't think it helps them in any way to do it. And I just think it's going to be North Carolina or I think it's going to be Clemson. I do think it could be Clemson because I think Florida State might do the work to right. roll out that red carpet for Clemson. I don't think they'll do the same for Miami. I just don't. Yeah, the most recent word is that Clemson um, hasn't kind of made the, the necessary advancements in the the research and the kind of yep. academic side of it. So we'll see how that plays out. And Miami may have that ability being a private university, but they don't have their own stadium. Florida already at taps. The Florida market's already tapped in with Florida state, but something you said earlier talking about how we could possibly break this grant of rights. And we've got Miss um, Kelly on here with us. So look, 2016, that's the kind of big point of emphasis that you brought up in that conference call. And it goes right back to the whole Swafford and Raycom thing. They're trying to launch the ACC digital network. They're promising this thing year after year. It never happens. All the promises surrounding that 2016 extension and on up to 2020, it was all um, made with lies. And it was all to promote Chad within that company. He's now the very top guy, you know, over the, the ACC direct network. That's like his baby. Um, supposedly they presented, an ultimatum that was that came from ESPN 
the ACC said, okay, well, if you either sign this thing now with these messed up terms or that's it, you're not getting paid the last nine years of the deal. Um, you're basically going to be, you know, contractually ob obligated to be in a league and you're not going to get paid. Right. So is there anything you can share with us, any kind of language around that, that could, might could, you think force them to settle or get this thing thrown out or, or get us in the, in the right direction? Do you think there's a kind of strategy they're going for there? Me? <laughs> um, yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Um, and I know a lot of people, you'll see Twitter and you'll see people and they've been saying it forever. Contracts are ironclad. You signed it, this and that. People don't realize. Um, and I can, I can, in my law career, I've done a lot of contract law. I've gone, I've held, I've, you know, handled a lot of big class actions and big lawsuits against big corporations um, on contracts. Um, one of the biggest parts of my career was, you know, dealing in court with um, homeowners and um, going against corporations such as, you know, the top five too big to fail banks. Mortgage contracts are ironclad too. Everybody signs the same one in every state every day. We know they all look the same if you've ever been to a closing, along with a note. However, when the government bailed out the banks and the HAMP program, the modification program got implemented and banks got caught being shady and, and starting the rules, lawsuits came to fruition and lawsuits were won, even under an ironclad contract. So, and that's pretty much, an, I can, I can, See the analogy between what I did there and what's going on here, because you you had a contract and goodness knows there's eight million of them at this point. We can all reference because even if you read the GOR, there's ESPN agreement, this agreement, that agreement, you know, and whatever. Um, even if you read that, the way they amended it and the way they did things behind the scenes and shady deals and, and doing things without, um, you know, notifying or FSU or even letting FSU have so much of a say so issuing an ultimatum with no new consideration. And a lot of people think, you know, ask me what is consideration in contract law? Contracts are a bargain for exchange. I give you, you give me something of value and I give you something of value and that binds a contract. You don't need much consideration to have a contract, but when you have ESPN running around saying we won't give any new media rights agreements unless you agree to go through 2036, that's an ultimatum. That's a threat. That's dealing in bad faith. That's not consideration. Um, to me, that is absolutely, and there's so many other things they did. Like, you know about Raycom, you know about, you know, all the amendments and stuff that was going on behind the scenes um, that Florida State was trapped in. And that's why the antitrust allegations have come up by the attorney general. Um, starting with her, she was claiming antitrust. You cannot have a, a monopoly and a contract cannot have an unfair restraint of trade. That's the way we work in this country. Um, and that, the ACC did that. It was full of ultimatums and promises and what if, and nothing that was going to materialize. Um, even when we got the ACC network rollout, uh, these people couldn't even negotiate a deal with Comcast, so half our fan base couldn't get it. Right. Everybody had to switch to direct TV or do this or do that. Um, they didn't, and they had a fiduciary duty, and that's another legal term that we use. Um, they, we can sign a contract, and courts go by the four corners of that document. Um, they look at it, and they, but the words are living in the contract. You have an obligation to perform your duties under that contract um, to my benefit, just as I do to you. If you breach that, if you're doing things in bad faith, then you and and I get damaged because of your bad behavior. Then you have that case in Florida, and that's not even getting to the breach of contract claims that um, Florida State has alleged. I think Florida State has a very good a very good argument to get out from under this. And not only that, you are dealing when you're getting into all these parties. You're dealing with ESPN. You're dealing with Raycom. You're dealing with all this shady stuff that was going on behind the scenes. The ACC and ESPN and all of them would be stupid to let this get to discovery right. because we're going to get all those emails. We're going to get all those meetings and everything that went on behind the scenes. And we're going to be able to see because in a, when you go to a deposition, um, you know, the deposition itself is an admissible is not admissible in court. But I can show you any exhibit I want and I can depose any party I want. It does not have to be somebody from the ACC. I could call Kirk Herbstreet in if he's, you know, in some way, shape or form. I'm just using an example. Y'all don't go crazy. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I have the right on behalf of my client to depose that. They would be stupid to let FSU get to that point.
So yeah, and, no, no. and it's Go not ahead. like we didn't just see this movie. The Pac-12, we saw the whole movie from start to finish. They did the exact same arguments, the same ideas. They could keep their conference together based on demands from the mm-hmm. from the conference to the the media partners. Exactly. It, it's we've this is not new. This is not new ground. The only new ground, and correct me if I'm wrong, Danielle, the two things I would have question about is jurisdiction, this question of where where will the lawsuit lie, and then the sovereign immunity. You can't sue the king. So yes, between those is. two. Which is the actually of all five of them? What which do you think is the strongest legal argument? I the fact that the ACC even filed that early, um, anticipating something that hadn't hadn't even happened yet. Right. Um, that that's not standing. That's not concrete damage. More bad faith. Right. It's just, it just seems like blatant. Yet. Yeah, we hadn't. You're that's just speculation and conjecture. Okay. Um, Florida does have a compulsory counterclaim rule. You would have to file um, your counter complaint if they're arising out from under the same facts, same parties here. I think they were trying to prevent that. I read uh, their complaint. I read FSU's complaint. FSU's, um, and we always, when we write complaints, we do the facts. We list who the parties are. We have those sections, and we have a jurisdiction and venue section. FSU's was short to the point. You have jurisdiction under this Florida statute, and it deals with circuit courts. You know, because we do. The damages are here. The damage to the plane, I mean, the damage to us is in Florida. Um, and they were doing business in the state of Florida. So I think Florida has jurisdiction. I think their argument is completely weak. And the fact that, because theirs was three pages. Right. Arguing jurisdiction, Look, you know. it doesn't, it's not going to take, um, you know, Matlock or some crazy <laughs> attorney to go in that courtroom and paint a picture that this was done out of pure nepotism they didn't ever come with the product the acc network was never something great they finally got some good people in there in ej manual and and uh you know eric mclean there at the very end and it was okay but it was so little so late you know big 10 network you know completely changed the whole entire you know outlook of that entire conference the sec network was um you know espn's baby um, you know, and it's at one like you want to kind of as pissed off as you are at ESPN because of the snub and everything else. At the same time, the ESPN kind of wanted to pump up the ACC. It wanted to start producing its games and do this stuff. But it was John Swafford who was standing there the whole time going, no, no, no. Raycon, they just lost SEC. They can't lose us, too. We got to keep these guys in business. My son is over there. He's he's in the bottom and, you know, he's, he's VP now. So it tells you. And it's not like it happened overnight. Like this is recent stuff that he's got since the merger and everything and the CW thing. Like I'm pretty sure he's still involved. When you look it up, he's still listed as a VP. So, Well, and I will say this one more point about jurisdiction. That's another question that does come up outside of which state has what jurisdiction on this case and what happened um, is, oh, it's all going to get removed to federal court anyway. Uh, both states are suing on state law claims, seeking declaratory judgments. So uh, as of right now, there is no reason to have this removed to federal court whatsoever. Uh, venue and jurisdiction are proper in circuit court of Leon County right here in Tallahassee. And that's my bottom line. So one thing we understood is that, say the, the case was in North Carolina, there's a chance they could get the grand rights dropped from whatever 520 million down to 200 something or the original 120 down to 60. But in Florida, it's going to be a either all or nothing if it were go to trial. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it is. It, I think, well, the ACC suit is basically trying to just enforce the grain of rights. That's all they want is a, they want a declaration by the court that the grain of rights is enforceable. Right. Florida state's kind of throwing a lot more in that besides just saying, you know, we want you to say it's not. Uh, Florida State has clearly alleged that they have been damaged by some of the, you know, the counts that I've kind of gone through. And I'm trying, I try to talk simply because I know when everybody hates when people use legalese and stuff. Um, So we appreciate you. No, (laughs) I try to, you know, it's like somebody was asking me the other night, well, consideration and contracts, you know, Florida State, somebody made the point, Florida State's not even saying there wasn't consideration for the contract. Well, I mean, if you go to page 14, I mean, paragraph 66, it's clear um, where they say the ACC, uh, the 2016 ACC network agreement granted ESPN the power to shut down the ACC network even after launch under certain circumstances. What was the consideration in us signing up for that? 
You know, I mean, it, it, you're you're not logically making sense. Um, you know, when I, it just, I, I wish I could explain how ridiculously one sided this whole is deal is, and the fact that they're issuing ultimatums um, behind the scenes like they did shows it. They were dealing in bad faith. Thirty eight pages. You... Sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask Jen if he, if she had anything for you or whatever. But you can go ahead. Uh, no, um, I'm just listening. I'm actually taking some notes real quick. So if I have questions, I'm going to come back around. How about that? All right. I'll let Nathan go. I just had a question. Um, so 38 pages is the is the uh, size of the suit from right. the sorry from Florida State. Mm -hmm. Is is that a, a large filing? Is it a small one? They they went into, into some detail about why the conference is basically damaged goods. I, I'm just trying to get an idea of if that's something that you've seen before, or are they normally only two or three pages? Um, it depends. A, a suit of this size, definitely 38 pages. Okay. Um, my, my, some of mine have been much bigger. Uh, in federal court, they will limit you, but <laughs> you're, you're on a certain account. But and I'm, I'm a long-winded person, so that doesn't always work. Uh, but then you have the exhibits attached as well that adds to the page count. Um, and that's why, because the ACC's complaint isn't all that long either. We heard it's a lot longer, but that's because they attached a whole bunch of exhibits to it. So, um, and Florida State just kind of, Florida State just laid it all out. I think it's a very well-written complaint. I think it details everything perfectly that happened and behind the scenes. And I think it absolutely, the facts alleged and the court has to take, you know, the facts alleged as true right now, um, you know, on a motion to dismiss or whatever, they have to as assume that and, and, and let the process go forward. Um, unless there's blatant grounds to, you know, get rid of the suit. I don't see that. I think Florida state with their facts and the things that have been alleged have sufficiently stated antitrust violations, have, have sufficiently stated breach of contract and breach of fiduciary duty, among the fact that they are also alleging that this violates public policy and the contract's unconscionable. Um, I can sign you to a ridiculously bad contract for you. I can dupe you if I have ulterior motives and I have bad faith. I can dupe you into doing it, but the contract's unconscionable. The contract's wrong. And, and what they have, and, and it goes back to also what happened with Maryland. Them upping the exit fee wasn't enough. So they decided to penalize us. It's an unfair penalty. They decided to penalize us with the GOR and make it 10 times worse. I think the, I can't remember what the complaint said. It was something about 240%. Uh, you know, that's how we go from an exit fee of what, 57 million to 500 and they did that on purpose because they didn't want anybody else to be able to get out from under this um, the way Maryland had done it. So, yeah, it's like 120 million immediately. And then you're supposed to pay another, you know, 380 or 400 something million over 13 years. It's they absolutely ridiculous. Kept amending and doing these things. And, and then, you know, you know all about the tier one, tier three stuff that was being negotiated too. like you're talking about Raycom and stuff. You knew all about. They continually kept doing these things to punish the schools. Right. So I'm sitting here like, why is everybody mad at Florida State? And why aren't y'all speaking up? Because, I mean, if you're in the ACC right now, and then they they did other bonehead things. Like, they didn't make Notre Dame fully join the conference. I mean, it was right. just ridiculous it, from day one. Um, well, so when you, you can't make Notre Dame do anything. They don't have to do anything. They... It, to be on the front of the bus all the time. They get to pick what they go, what they do, how they do it. I get it. I get it. Um, but honestly, so y'all answer me this. This is what I'm hearing. This is what I think, okay? One, Florida State doesn't need a dancing partner. But they are waiting on that dancing partner to see if Notre Dame will make that jump. Right. I agree. Because if Notre Dame doesn't make that jump with them, that's when you go down the list, okay? Um, I think they would love North Carolina. I don't see that happening. And I don't see it happening for a couple different reasons because, one, North Carolina, if they will tell the ACC they will stay, will get whatever the hell they want. That's number one. Number two, I also think the SEC is going to give them whatever the hell they want. And the SEC will take NC State with them. So. I, I, I kind of agree. I mean, yeah. 
those state all, lawsuits are interesting because yeah. they haven't ever really been attempted. They've nope. been they've been put into into law. One of them is, one of them isn't, but it's never really been either charged to be enforced or tried to be broken before. Um, but I know this: North Carolina State pissed off a lot of people, including North Carolina, when they voted, nor, uh, you know, uh, the NorCal schools and SMU to be included in the in the conference. So, I, as, I the NC State thing, I think is it's broken. I, I agree with you on that, but I think it might be broken from the goodwill of North Carolina. Quite possible. But yeah, but within the legislative branch, it's not. Yeah, I think all like, that all that stuff is kind of the reason why what Garnet Knoll is saying here or VT Knoll with that, that header. Yeah. The Big Ten doesn't need a partner for FCU. I think that's the reason that, yeah. you know, the Big Ten is like, look, we'll get Florida State in. Like Jim was saying, if Notre Dame can come, that would be great. Yeah. That would be a slam dunk. Right. But if not, then we can go down the list of, of who's next. But they'll play with uneven. They've shown before they'll play with, an, you know, an odd number if, if that's – the case, but the, the big question is how quickly can we get out of this damn suit? Is it gonna is it gonna be discovery? Are they gonna have discovery? Are they gonna go to court? I just don't see how it's possible that they ever really go forward with this thing. Cause when you start poking around 2016, well, and while we have you on here, I really want to ask you about this because it's a Big 12 mafia. Well, supposedly ESPN has been begging Oklahoma and Texas to drop the Big 12 for years. Yeah. Because y'all's grant of rights is a bit more favorable. Well, the Big 12 was a little, you know, a bit happier with it. Um, it was just Texas and Oklahoma that weren't happy, and they were real vocal about it. So supposedly they're played a hand in that, blowing up the Big 12 somewhat to make it what it's become today versus before. So I feel like there's just so much in there. And, of course, to go with the Raycom and all that stuff. Like, it just – I just – Discovery to get all those emails and stuff. I just don't see how it happens. And me and Jen have talked about the NFL coach, John Gruden, you know, what happened to him. It's like when you really decide as an attorney you want to go after something, it's like they're going to have to either sacrifice somebody, <laughs> you know what I mean, throughout all this, or they're going to they're going to settle. They're just going to settle. I think so. I, I think they're going to settle. I don't think they want this coming out in Discovery. And, I mean, there is, you know – because the issue is in Florida State, here's where the ACC kind of did mess up. They sued Maryland and they admitted a lot in that Maryland lawsuit. And you will see FSU cite that throughout. Right. Yes. Right. They admit, you know, that the ACC constitution is a contract. Okay. They admitted that in the Maryland suit. Um, FSU is now using that to say, you know, okay, that constitution is a contract and the sole purpose listed in the constitution is the function to enrich its member institutions and goes on and on about all their obligations to us that they haven't lived up to. So, I mean, that's just a lawsuit they filed publicly before. Do you, now you are, like y'all have talked about, you've got Raycom, you've got ESPN, you've got all these other people involved. If they let that get to discovery, then they're stupid. I'm just going to keep saying it because there's no well, other way to say it. You're stupid. It's the same argument with the Pac-12, right? They yeah. said that they they might string out the the two schools that didn't get included, o o Oregon State and Washington State, and extend the suit and basically bleed them dry because the power they said was in the hands of the 10 schools that left. Now what do we find out? That was complete BS. The power actually stayed and resided with Oregon State and Washington State. They're the ones who basically lost – or, sorry, won the lawsuit, and it was settled. It, it, you know, they won on their merits to get a better settlement, uh, and now everybody's going their separate ways in 2024. So I think it's in everybody's best interest to have this thing settled. I would ask you guys, as Florida State people, do you want it to be settled? Or do you want your school to sort of stick it to them and see if you can't get out scot-free? Yeah, I definitely do. Look, they stuck that in that initial suit. <laughs> I'm not sure on what page, but yeah, the initial offer is $0. Right. So the, 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 I kind of feel like if they got the venue somehow moved to North Carolina, I feel like there's a chance that they could end up with an actual settlement where Florida State pays, say, the $120 million and you do off, you ax the 13 extra years. Right. But if it's in Florida, I think you go for the juggler and, and Jen, take it away. What you think on that? 
Well, you know me. My favorite color is petty. I always say this all the time. I love it, love it, love it. Give me the discovery. Give me all of it. But if it does turn out to be a settlement for not an amount of money that would make you sick, let's just do it. Get the hell out of this clown show conference right. and be done. Like yeah. I'm, but I would still like to see it. I'm really nosy. Like my nosiness knows no bounds. I have no time for drama for myself, but other people's drama, I'm here for it. Like <laughs> if I could see like your text messages and emails, like look, I'll sit there and read it all night long, right. all night long. I don't care, but I don't think it gets there. I don't, I think it's going to be a settlement. I do. Um, and Danielle, you can, you can answer this a little better than I can, but when you have these type of powerful people that will be involved in this type of discovery, when you're talking about ESPN, even the college football playoff committee, depending on how they word this or what they ask for in these discovery um, requests, you've got people that are extremely powerful that do not want their personal emails out because it is a fishing expedition. That's exactly what it is. Guys, it's exactly what it is. They look at everything. They don't care if it's personal. They don't care if it's a uh, company. They ask for your stuff. And a lot of people don't want it out. And I don't blame them. I wouldn't want mine out. <laughs> but I'd enjoy reading it. You know, I'd enjoy reading it. We just saw Washington, <laughs> University of Washington's, right? President yeah. Kase. All her emails came out, or sorry, text messages came out. And how bad is that made look? made uh, university of washington and, and her personally look it's it, it, it was yeah. a horrendous story yeah so. so they don't want like nobody wants it out even if right. it's just like something that you're not looking for like yeah like you could talk about i mean look at john gruden look at john gruden with the commanders guys that commander's lawsuit was not after john gruden that was for the cheerleaders who were being sexually harassed right right and think of um, who else was on that, you know, around Florida State staff that was communicating with Salford. You're talking about a guy who's like the vice president of the NCAA now. You're talking yep. about a guy, you know, so there's Stand so many calls, levels guys. of this, this This thing goes out and branches of people who are motivated to take care of this North Carolina kind of even into the NCAA. It just it branches out so much. And another thing. Um, you know, that I've seen comments, the ACC will fall apart if FSU leaves. I've heard ESPN yes. is afraid. Look, it's not just Fox. As much as we've hyped up Fox and how excited we are to see what, you know, the big Fox, you know, big noon kickoff for Fox is going to be and all this different stuff. It's Fox, NBC, and CBS. Like, right. this thing is not the same. In two years, they renegotiate this contract. It is not in ESPN's best interest for Florida State to be a part of the Big Ten because that is a giant you know, chess piece, a big part of the piece of the pie when they go to sit down and negotiate how that splits up between the four networks, you know, with three being on one side and one on the other. I just, with ESPN shrinking how it has, it's just things are looking a lot different here um, in the light moving forward. It's, they don't have the same, you know, monopoly over sports entertainment like they used to. And I just, uh, just excited, man. I cannot wait to see this thing uh, come to fruition and get the hell out of what? there. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this to Danielle real quick. Um, the Disney ESPN relationship, Disney's looking to sell ESPN. They're yes. looking for people. So this is going to be ugly. And that that's exactly why I think this is going to go to a settlement that's going to be nowhere close to $500 million. I And you tell me, I think it's going to be around what the actual exit fee is. Right. I don't think they're even going to try for that grant of rights because I think they're going to realize if you try for the grant of rights, that's when ESPN gets brought in with the discovery, right? right? If you just go with the exit fee, that's where it would only be the ACC if they decide to sue for that, correct? Am I it's, wrong about that? No, it's a perfect point, actually, because okay. if, and plus you have both sides saying um, one's trying to enforce the grant of rights, one's in FSU is trying to say it's unenforceable. Um, and, and if we win, I mean, if you get to the point where you can say the grain of rights or there's at least enough questions in it, um, because like I've said, and I know we have this talk about consideration and bargain for exchange, I get something of value, you do too. Uh, if you read the GOR, it keeps referencing ESPN. ESPN is the consideration for the GOR because they right. routinely say in the GOR yep. without additional consideration because there was none. That's a one-sided deal 
that, you know, we should have never been involved with. Now, when it comes to the exit fee, yeah, we're in on that. I mean, so, I mean, you know, but do we have damages enough that the settlement could negate and we could just walk off and say, okay, we'll give you six million because you yeah, think we, like, we may owe you 54 million but we have 50 million dollars in damages for example right so yeah we'll out we'll offset yeah so like i was like I, I the way i was reading it is that it looks like they're trying to settle the exit fee right or i mean i honestly could see fsu maybe even just paying it just to get out um yeah. i don't know i think it just depends i think all of it depends they're not doing five hundred million dollars, obviously. They're no, not that's, that. not gonna that's not going to happen. Till Dog um, Twelve, let's get this super chat out. Oh, sure. um, Two dollars super chat from Till Dog Twelve. Will Cox was FSU's Judas, and they give a shout out. Hey, Danielle, appreciate <laughs> you, Till Dog. I love this. That's fantastic. I, in my opinion, and I got a jet here a minute, guys. I'm sorry, I got a oh, show sure. at the top of the hour, but um, I think you're looking at. In my opinion, all things considered, they're going to settle, and it'll be about a hundred million dollars total. That's yeah. what I was thinking. I actually, think we're all I pretty much in line. I can yeah. see that. I can see that definitely. I because I think we yeah. like you said, we just want to get out. We want to yep. get over with. We want to get out and you know move on. It's it's time. We don't want to deal with it anymore. And they're out in twenty twenty four. They're playing Big Ten football next year. There you go. That's what I think. I think twenty twenty five is when they'll be. Um, their first season will be. Um, please, I cannot wait. Oh, We've got till August 14th <laughs> to announce. As long as we announce before August 14th or before midnight on August 14th, if you will, August 15th, that's the deadline. As long as we announce we're exiting the ACC, we will be in the Big Ten by 2025 in time for that whole restructured um, deal. So, Nathan, great. can I ask you one thing real quick before you have to get sure. off? What are you thinking about the other ACC teams that are so angry? Like, the, I feel like the statement from the Wake. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, see, there's just Wake weird? Forest, Boston College, Syracuse, to name a few, are in real trouble. So their oh, yeah. anger is just like Oregon State's and Washington State's. Yep. It's the exact same thing. I mean, I get it. But shouldn't they be more mad at the ACC for – Screwing them over as much that's as they like, did. That's not... like getting that's like getting mad at mad at the parent for something a co uh, somebody that was playing a game with you. Instead of getting <laughs> mad at the guy playing the game with, you're gonna get mad at the parent. The parent can't do anything. Well, uh, so they, so they like... attack each other. Well, Wake it's Forest like, is out here crying a couple months ago, yeah, or even, not even last yeah. couple weeks ago. Oh, we can't keep our players. We can't afford yeah. it. This, this money right. game, and it's a month later. Oh, we make plenty of money. The ACC plays us. No, we're not upset. We love it. We're happy. And that's the thing. That's my main thing. That's why this is going to get thrown out. They were negotiating on bad in bad faith for Florida State and for Clemson. In good faith for a Syracuse, a Wake Forest, who's happy to get forty million a year. That's that's whatever, 10, you know, 50% of their operating cost. Florida State's is, you know, I don't know. It might be 10%. I don't know the actual number. I don't have it in front of me. But that's just the thing. It, it was it was all about their little country club there in, uh, you know, the North Carolina area. And all that, all that stuff's going to come to a head. It's just like everything else in this country. You see all the different documentaries that come up where just totally, you know, ridiculous business practices and stuff that happens. You see a documentary. Well, there's going to be one on Raycom and the ACC and all those contract negotiations in the 2010s. And uh, they don't want it to be now. They want it to be a little bit later when some stuff comes out. They're not going to let this discovery happen. The Love realignment me. 30 for 30 is going to be like 10 episodes. It's going to be like oh, I can't wait. Dance. It's going to be amazing. And it's going it? to jump all the way back to probably 2010, 2011, when Maryland uh, wanted to get out of the ACC, sorry, out of the ACC to the Big Ten. What were they had a uh, game, man? And then it just went bang, bang, bang over the next 12, 13 years. So I'd I'd pay for that. I'd go watch it in the theater. I would too. <laughs> and I hope that you and your um, cohorts actually are the ones narrating it because I think that would be great because you all oh, get on um, top of it. Okay. But what I will say is I think that the other members, like these other teams, they seem like adult children of, ch of alcoholics, right? Right. So... They blame the messenger, not the person who is treating them like shit, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. that's what they're doing, you know? 
It's and like so, better wives, right? How do, yes, where yes. Where do they have to go? You can they yell at ESPN and the ACC without a, uh, without ESPN and the ACC? What is Boston College? What is Wake Forest? What is Syracuse? Nothing. But what are they without saying, Florida I, State? You guys are in the conference. I'm just saying mm-hmm. those are open questions. Absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, my thing is, is what are they now? They're nothing now. Yeah. They're just getting yeah, free money. Good. They're getting free money. I yeah. understand. Uh, I get what you're saying. <laughs> but Nathan, I know we, you know, you got to get out of here. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah if yeah. you want to, go ahead and you know plug your channel, let the pe- people know where they can find you, and then after that, we'll get into this quarterback catastrophe, and we'll talk about that as FSU fans. Okay. Excellent. First of all, thanks again for having me on the show, Danielle. Thank nice you. To and uh, if, follow me there on Twitter. There's my Twitter address, or just look up Big Twelve Mafia on YouTube, and um, we got shows like three or four times a week. They're pretty fun. Well, we I can't wait. Time. So any yeah. next time you guys go live, you better send me that link. I want to get back okay. on. Okay. Well, we're we're going in five minutes or whatever. But then <laughs> next oh, time, I can do it tonight. We, the next we time. will be we'll, we will be online tomorrow, and I'll have Bob Thompson on the show oh. tomorrow night. So maybe oh, I'll send you wow. for that, Jen. Yes, please, 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 okay. please. All right. Okay, everybody, everybody have a great night. Again, happy holidays. And we'll talk Thank soon. Thank you okay, so much. Guys? Right. Appreciate you, you, Nathan. See you later. Bye-bye. We'll catch Bye. you next time, brother. I want, can I say one thing real quick? Just to Go ahead. Everything. Um, there's another aspect to this. If you get to Discovery, and because you would be deposing um, – you know, former ACC people, you'd be deposing ESPN people, you would be deposing, you know, potentially a lot of different parties. If it is proven that there was collusion on any of that, then, you know, you have a potentially even bigger lawsuit. I have been in a deposition before where I have learned from, you know, someone testifying that there was a third party involved um, that was overseeing stuff and was instructing people to do what I had already alleged. Uh, and I immediately canceled the deposition, went home and filed an amended complaint to add account for civil conspiracy. So, you know, that that's one of those things where if discovery comes out, it not only shows us everything, but you're potentially adding ESPN and Raycom or whoever to yep. a wall. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Jen. I mean, I was just going to say, I can totally see that. And I think, I mean, one what they're calling a countersuit, which is not a countersuit because they filed it before Florida State had any action, is absolute mm-hmm. bullshit. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to use that language, but it is because you you can't file a lawsuit on something that hasn't happened yet, and you also can't then argue that it was in good faith because you didn't. Florida State did legally what they were supposed to do. They announced their meeting. And they did it publicly. You then can't go around that process because that's the law in Florida, by the way, for club and Daniel, um, correct me if I'm wrong. They have to, as a public school, right. Announce within well, yeah, meeting agenda hours prior to they do. So, and, yeah. yeah. So they cannot then be punished by saying the ACC filed first. So they get jurisdiction because of something they are legally required to do. They can't. And in, in every, you know, in a lot of cases, we have to, you have to have standing to sue. I mean, it's a famous thing we use, but it means I can't sue on conjecture. I can't say, hey, I think you're going to get mad at me tomorrow, so I'm going to go file a lawsuit. I'm not allowed to do those things. Um, I have to show concrete damages. I have to show there were damages. There were damages in place. At the time they filed, there were no damages in place. You, the agenda hadn't even been released. It was just right. released. All Florida State was required to do was to announce that they were going to have a board of trustees meeting 24 hours prior, which they did. For the ACC to file a lawsuit, I mean, at that point is speculation. They could Mm -hmm. have gotten up there and voted about anything. It's just pure speculation. They did off internet rumors. Yeah, absolutely. I know Jen's got a question from the comments, but I I want to address this one right here from Allison Burks first. It says, discovery goes both ways, so hopefully there's nothing in her own closet. Well, here's the thing, Allison. There's a good chance, and I spoke on it for a second earlier. There's a good chance there is skeletons, but it would be bad faith actors of people who acted in harmony with the ACC in order to maybe get a job as the VP. 
of the NCAA. So yes, there may be stuff that people were employed at Florida State during that time, but those people are not employed at FSU at that time. And there's a whole new leadership and that would just be, um, you know, finding dirt on us back then will just end up being uh, gold in our pocket at this point. And from how I look at it, y'all can comment on that if you want, but like I said, it, I just wanted still, to. It, would, it still will not change the fact that these contracts are unconscionable that yeah. um, they were done in bad faith, that the ACC had a duty to Florida State under that contract. They breached it every way you could imagine. They never had Florida State's best interests at heart, um, along you know, with the majority of their members, as we know. So one thing Florida State does in that complaint beautifully is outlines you know, the negotiation tactics and what other schools were doing. When the Pac-12 started imploding, that's when I really started. I was like, oh, gosh, this is about to get ugly. You, but you could see the Big 12 fighting to go even get schools out of it. The Big 10 as well. You already knew Oklahoma and Texas were going to the SEC. Then the, then, um, not Oklahoma, probably. I came talking too fast. I can't even. Then the ACC turns around and tries to placate us with Stanford and Cal. Get out of here. <laughs> Those just, are replacements. It's not my best interest. Um, you know, I mean, it just, it's a violation of every sense of any kind of contract decency law you could name what they did yeah we've had this question a bunch um talking about if they ignore i don't know if you had anything on this i think this uh, is the one yeah. you was talking about so, yeah it was um what happens if the college football playoff committee ignores the subpoena from the ag moody um a lot of bad things can happen. <laughs> she uh, she is the attorney general of the state of Florida. She represents the state of Florida. Um, the damages, like I said, similar to that, uh, she, you know, we're done in Florida. She has a right to ask those questions. Um, at that point, you would file motions and you would ask for sanctions and you would do those things because she's, le I mean, legally she is entitled to have the answers to those questions. They can object to them. And we object to discovery requests all the time, um, you know, when they come across, but, just blatantly not answering no. That's no. when they send like everything, but it's all redacted. But they didn't yeah, even do that. Uh, yeah, they'll object to that kind of stuff. And then, or they'll say something, you know, this is immaterial. You don't need to be asking about this, whatever. And then, you know, you, you file a motion to compel. You schedule a hearing and you go after them. And if you win, you get money. You get your attorney's fees paid. So I mean, the, on, on our side of FSU suing, um, but with um, A.G. Moody, like I said, she's a government official elected by the state of Florida. Um, she has a lot of power at her disposal uh, because, you know, she can investigate. I, I used to extern at the A.G.'s office. We're talking possible criminal sanctions, civil sanctions. Anything's wide open on that. Hell yeah. Well, before we get into and we usually start taking questions either through text or over the bat phone here or in the comments, um, you know, a little bit after an hour, but I want to talk and get everybody's comments on, you know, one of the bigger things that's happened here. Um, Tate Rotomaker, obviously, you know, right before it's time to get on the plane and head to Miami for the orange bowl. I don't think I'm going to play. I think I'm gonna go ahead and opt out. I put in the title Tate punked out. Um, you know, popular ex person out there, our friend Smooches, she does the whole thing pretty much like cursing out his dad. There's like a whole controversy. Apparently, it's more the parents than the kid. But at the same time, the kid is more, he's always seemed kind of maybe nor here nor there. He's not that huge competitor. Um, but into the end of the story, he's not playing. It goes right back to Brock Glenn, the true freshman. Um, how are we feeling about it, this whole situation? Do you, are you guys mad at Tate? You think it's just he's doing what's be best for himself? You pissed off about the timing like I am? It just seems like to me, if like it, they were going after a transfer quarterback this whole time. It's not like something changed in the last couple of days. Like what changed? Um, it just it it sure seems like he's just letting his brothers down there. Do you think he has a landing spot and that's why he did it? I don't know. I don't believe so because I believe we'd have heard it if he had a place to go. I think he'd have landed there immediately. I think. Uh, I think there's just hurt feelings there. I think he's upset from, there. But from what? Because they've known for like a month that this is going on. So again, I just. I feel like there might have been a team that told him, "You're going to get a landing spot." 
that would be the only thing that really makes sense unless Florida State's taken two quarterbacks. Yeah, that that is the one rumor that was out there. And we've seen some different people, you know, retweeting some of the different, um, you know, I think there's an Arizona quarterback out there. Uh, we will not confirm nor deny anything about that. Um, but it's interesting. The kid is, you know, 8,000 yards, all this good stuff. He is a good quarterback. I just – look, I didn't understand why everybody was just absolutely freaking the hell out about it because we've been talking about it, like, ever since he came out there and had that rough game, you know, against UF and got hurt. Like, it didn't look the same. When he held it and got taken down for that sack, there was a lot of people out there, myself included, who were talking about, look, Tate's got a chance to come and win that job in 2024. Well, that kind of, you know, it fell off. Unfortunately, that didn't appear to be what it looked like when he got on the field. So it's like, do you blame the kid for transferring? No, the whole thing is just the timing of it. It just seems like a bunch of sour milk and to leave your guys hanging at the last second like that to just, you know, basically, I think they didn't want the Georgia tape. I think they knew the Georgia tape wouldn't be any good when he transferred. Didn't want to, you know, tape of him getting sacked 10 times or whatever the case may be. What do you think, Danielle? You've been quiet down there. Uh, I'm just listening to y'all because I everybody was freaking out yesterday. I got on. I was like, oh, my goodness. You know, <laughs> I didn't even know what officially had happened for a minute. And then, you know, I started <laughs> messages and stuff. And I was like, OK, let me figure out what's going on now, you know, between lawsuits mm-hmm. and that. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. I mean, was it hurt feelings from the parents? I know the quote that was reported by, you know, one of the beat media, media people um, about his dad, you know, or something. And then I know, you know, like Jen said, it's a good point. Did, do you, do we think he had a landing spot or, you know, is it just, we may be getting another quarterback um, because it, I, I believe it was cited in that article that his father was upset, I guess, or he was upset. I don't know that we were actively recruiting, you know, like DJ and, and other, you know, Cam, that kind of stuff. Um, I, maybe it's a concern that, and, and maybe a school did come along and say, Hey, look, look at they're they're out there recruiting this and that, and you're not going to be starting next year anyway. This is your deal, you know, so come on and bowed off to state or something, something, I mean, you know, something because yeah, that way he'd get more film. I'm assuming he's, a, is, I mean, he graduated, right? So he's a grad transfer. Is that correct? Uh, that's a good question. He should be because he's a fourth year guy. I mean, he's going into his fifth year. I'm sure he is. Look, it's just the timing of it. And Kev Kev says, makes me wonder if daddy made the call on him not playing in the ACC title. It's one of those things that, yeah, that's what the word on the street is. The parents made the call, but at the same time, like he's not 17. Just said it. He's graduated. This is a 22-year-old young man, uh, 21, 22-year-old man. If he wanted to play, he would play. I think it's more of a thing to where you you get your dad to call in sick for you so you don't have to face the boss. It obviously bothered Coach Norvell. I mean, oh, yeah. Was, he was not happy. Yeah, he was yeah. not happy. And, that, and, and that's a big difference because we know, Coach, you know, when players have left, he'll tweet out and wish him the best, you know, and, and, you know, good luck in future endeavors, always cheer for you, that kind of language. Um, this one, that. So I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I'm mean, at, <laughs> at this point, <laughs> just, I'm done speculating about it, but everybody was, y'all right. Everybody was freaking out. I was just like, uh, y'all, I've been so calm. It's like since signing day, I'm just like going into this going like, let's just enjoy. We were 13 and oh, guys, we're 13 and oh, and our fan base can't calm the F down. Thank you. Seriously, it's, it's crazy. 13 and oh, ever since we lost Go ahead. the Sorry. snub, it's the snub, the it's snub. the snub. Well, ever since you know, basically, you go 13 and oh, it's just been one thing after the other, one thing after the other. And I guess that's why, you know, Florida State's fans kind of like snap because it's like, who the fuck are you, Tate Rotomaker? Like, after all this shit, we've got all this stuff going on. 
And like, you're getting to be like, this is your moment. Like, you know what I mean? You get to be the starting quarterback for the 13 and 0 Florida state Seminoles in the orange bowl. And you take up all these first quarter reps for two or three weeks. You know, uh, supposedly they knew for a while he's been missing meetings. You know, I, I take that shit with a grain of sand because, you know, all these players are going to have some kind of thing that you could say. And it's like, we never heard that shit before. Like now that he's leaving all of a sudden we're hearing all that stuff. Like we never heard it before. So it is what it is. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. There's a reason you're a fourth year guy and you weren't ready. You know, you're just, it was never going to be him. Um, unfortunately it goes to Brock Glenn. Um, but I guess at least we've got a guy taking the snaps and Brock Glenn who, you know, has that competitive fire in him and is going to, you know, go out there and do it. But unfortunately well, I, I, with Rodemaker add... leaving, you have nobody, but you know, behind him. I'm going to add something on Brooklyn because, you know, I'm from Memphis. You know, I love my Memphis people. Brooklyn, you got that Memphis in you. Let's do it. Let's win it. Let's, he's going to show up and he's going to be tough. I, I'm cool with that. I'm good with it. I, I agree. I like him. I mean, I, I, I know. I, do too. I understand what, you know, we, we have one game to look at and people had opinions about that. Um, but I, I, I like, I, I like his swag. I like his fight. I like his fire. I I I, I just think he's I think he's going to be really good for us in the future. So I'm excited. I mean, we were already down. I don't know how much you know heading into this game anyway. It's been one like y'all said, one thing after another since the snub and um, you know going to the Orange Bowl. Uh, so you know nothing's phasing me right now. We just we're suing people. You know, <laughs> all kinds of stuff going on. Let's just, Right. Our pets' heads. Our pets' heads are falling off, guys. Our pets' heads are falling off. Let's just like, vibe. <laughs> like that's how it is. It's like, it's fine. I mean, seriously, I, I'm okay. Now, I'm fine with Tate Rotomaker. I am not dissing him in any way. But with all the opt outs, all the players that are out, put in Tate or put in Brock. I think you're gonna have the same result. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, pretty Noel girl, you know, she's a diehard Noel fan. And, you know, her opinion on it, she's saying that she thinks it's kind of unfair, the heat that um, he's taken. But Kev comes back and says, you know, it's not the what, it's the when. And I agree with Kev. And, look, Pretty Noel girl, I agree with you 100%. A lot of people out there on we the timeline no are hating hate. just to hate. But here on this channel, and, you've, you know, you've listened. We've been consistent, like, when guys transfer, especially these guys who got recruited over, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that, we, we're all about it. We want them to go succeed. And we kind of figured after that Florida game, the way it went, that Rotomaker would transfer out. But it is yep. just kind of the dragging around and wasting those vital – those 15 practices are vital and to waste them and stuff. And, yeah, I think they knew a little bit earlier than it came out. So Brock was taking some first-team reps. But that's where the criticism comes from us and from, you know, us being – you know, from a different generation, uh, you know, it's just a little bit different now the way some of these kids handle stuff. And, uh, yeah, maybe it's unfair, um, but we're not too hard on the kid. It's just um, – it just sucks with everything and all the, the different people that are, you know, leaving for the NFL and stuff. It just really sucks to leave your, your team hanging after you took those reps. But uh, it is what it is. We'll wish them the, uh, the best moving forward, um, I wish you know, after this. Absolutely. I mean, the kid's been loyal and I agree. It's like, let's, let's just calm down a little bit. Let him go. If he wants to go, don't hate on him at all. I just, I, I mean, I think we all saw it. I don't, I mean, hell, maybe he could have come out in the orange bowl and had an amazing performance, but we'll never know now. Will we, we know what we won't. All right, so yeah. I never got to read this. We kind of got on the the uh, Florida State uh, quarterback situation there for a little bit, but to bounce back a little bit on the um, contract stuff. Nick Flair, um, our guy with another dollar ninety nine super chat. We settle for one hundred fifty million, but get the thirty for thirty in fifteen years. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly what he means by that. But uh, we appreciate the super chat, and I think we're all oh. kind of pretty much in agreement that it's probably going to be like 120 somewhere in there, a range around that exit fee without the big uh, $400 
tack on over 13 years. So we're pretty much in agreement on there. I don't know if you're talking about like we get that documentary on the ACC. That's got to be what he's talking about. The 30 for 30 on this whole Swafford and ACC network and Raycon deal. We get that 30 for 30 in 15 years. I hope so, Nick. That would be freaking awesome. Me too. I, 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 oh, my gosh. I always wanted us to have one, you know, even before they did the show on the 99, you know, champion team. I'm like, they're doing 30 for 30s on everybody. Can, you know, can we have a good one like on Coach Bowden or something? Um, and then, yeah. but People now, getting two or three. It's like Bowden had no, to go out there and produce his own. It's crazy. It's crazy. Has been now, 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 we get, now we're going to get one because we're suing people, you know. So, whatever. <laughs> I'm just done. But has Bobby gotten his wins back? Because until that happens, I think. Thank you. That that's exactly. I'm gonna tell you. I would make that a part of any settlement. You tell, go tell your boys absolutely. Yeah, to get one hundred percent. You don't want us to go through discovery. Bed together. So just go on and go over there and tell them to give my coaches wins back. Yep. Give Bobby his wins back. That man deserves them. He's better than anybody else in the business. Classier. Joe Paterno got his wins back. Are we kidding? Are we kidding? Okay. Right. Oh, I've seen a lot of people in the comments talking about um, CBS and possibly TBS. Um, I grew up on watching the Braves on TBS. So, you know, I would be all for that. Um, I know it's not Ted Turner and everything like it used to be. But, yeah, TBS is a big step up from freaking CW. So, yeah, that would be awesome to catch some college football games on a Saturday morning or a Saturday evening on uh tbs but we're about an hour and a minute in here we are packed out we got 375 people in here make sure if you're not already subscribed to the channel you hit that subscribe button we're trying to get to to 2000 we're going to do a cash giveaway when we get to 1500 i haven't even looked at that maybe it happens during this show um but if you're not already following jen on x it's at Jen Santee 1890. Make sure you get there over there and follow her on X and you can follow her everything she's into. She posts it over there and uh, let the people know where to, to find you, Danielle. I don't want to lie about your um at. Okay. I'm um, at D Kelly E Y 21. Um, on, on, I'm no, it's, it's Twitter. I'm sorry. I'm, I just can't do, I can't do the X thing. I'm not. Yeah, I don't do X. <laughs> And I'm I'm one of the old people that actually post a lot on Facebook. So I'm I'm on Facebook too, Daniel Joyner Kelly. Um, I kind of have to for weather and radio station stuff anyway. So um, yeah, I still use Facebook. And also renegadereport.substack.com. After we get done live, these things go over there and there's an audio only downloadable version that you can do if you don't have time to catch the whole thing for the paid subscribers only for the first kind of 24, 48 hours audio only download. Plus there's all kind of, you know, when we get commitments, recruiting, all kind of cool articles. We've got Matt Champion. You've seen him in the comments. He's our writer. He's wrote at Tom Alec Nation, all kind of cool places. And he's doing a great job over there. Um, hopefully we've got a quarterback commitment article coming soon but that thing um keeps changing keeps getting pushed along down the road they keep kicking the can we keep thinking um that it's coming but uh hopefully we get an answer on that soon uh we're gonna open up the lines and start taking calls and questions so if you have anything for me danielle or jen now's the time but uh what do y'all want to talk about next what you got anything on your mind jen? um what do you think about this lawrence to a feeling thing like that's right. Lawrence Toafili, Jerry and Jones, and who is the third one has opted out? Renardo Green. Renardo Green. Big blow. We were just talking about this, you know, a few days ago. And those were kind of three of the stalwarts. You were like, I thought Jerry and Jones had came out and pretty much said he was going to play. He did. He got mm -hmm. injured. That's right. Jerry and Jones had an injury. Oh, man. We've got calls right off the bat. You're live with the Renegade okay. Rundown. What's up, everyone? How you doing? It's Jeremy. What's up, Jeremy? How you doing? I, I had mentioned earlier, FSU is practicing 10 minutes from my house. I'm not going to lie, man. It got me kind of pumped up for the game. Oh, yeah? Heck, yeah. You got to get some inside intel for us? No, I didn't. They're not allowing people in now. <laughs> well, good uh, deal. Good deal. I'm glad. Which is which we need to start doing, to be honest. Yes, absolutely. Yes. They need to. Uh, I think they are adjusting kind of who they trust moving forward. And uh, who knows? Maybe we can position ourselves in there. It's all about what's best for the program that's all we want here we want florida state to be the best it possibly can but uh did you have a question for one of us 
Yeah, when do you – I mean, I know this is a million-dollar question. When are we going to get the quarterback situation? Every day I go on Twitter – or X, excuse me, and they say, today's the day, expect portal news, and then we don't get it. And, and I understand they're probably waiting on paperwork or final stuff, but realistically. Yeah, I appreciate the call, man. We're going to close it down and let the line open up again, but we'll answer it. Man, uh, it's exactly that. You know, I've done her – I'll say this. I've heard multiple times that it's a done deal. You know, they're just finishing up the paperwork. And, and I never came out and said a particular this time or this day that it's going to come. There was a lot of rumors that went public that it was going to be around Christmas. That never happened. I had heard something about the following day. We're sitting here, you know, so. But only we're just going to know when they make an announcement. This staff, with everything that has gone on, all the issues, all the stuff getting reported earlier than the staff wanted it to, the stuff with the, the playoff snub, all that stuff kind of getting betrayed with how they did that camera angle shot. with his, They're like done with the media. They're like done with their business being out there. And I think with this quarterback competition or whatever you want to call it, this um, quarterback um, recruitment, they are just they're keeping everything in-house and they're not letting it out. And apparently Cam Ward and DJ Ugalele, and if you believe that there's a third quarterback out there, they're all doing a very good job of keeping their cards close to their vest. And I don't know if you guys have a prediction or if you have heard anything uh, different than what I've heard. I have it. I, like you said, I think everything has been close to the vest. I, I think that it's been one of those deals. Um, and I think more speculation came up, of course, with Tate, you know, announcing – that one of them would be coming here. So, um, yeah, I just don't think anybody knows right now. Well, yeah. I'm, George, you know my opinion. I thought, I guess, from day one, right, it was going to be DJU. Um, I haven't heard anything that changes my mind off of that, except, God, I am hearing some Cam Ward stuff, dude. Like, I, it's weird. Um, because if he was a signed, sealed, delivered thing for Miami, it would have already happened. Yeah. So they seems like they've really they've lost a lot of their confidence that they had early on. Yeah, yeah. Seems like it, when I it also, went longer than the first week, they started to get confident, and then as it's gone on another week and a half, they've given up. This thing could go all the way. That's the thing. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be all the way like two more weeks. It could be the very end. And these guys don't even have to commit, like. They just have to get into the portal during this 30-day 30, 30 period. So all he has to do is, like, sign before January 18th or whenever the semester starts to be able to be available for um, the spring, you know, to play football in the spring. So it's not like he's got plenty of time, and that's part of it. <laughs> that's what stinks. It's like I just – it's crazy for DJU and Cam Moore, two quarterbacks who have, you know, all these different options to both be stuck on one. And it's it's really one of those. It's It's pretty weird. Yeah, I just – I feel like um, with Cam, I think the NFL is a little bit more involved than anybody else thinks. Yeah. And that would make sense. Look, if Cam's like, look, I'm either going to go to FSU or I'm going to go to the NFL and DJ's waiting, it's like, okay. Well, it's like, you know, just let me know. If you're going to the NFL, good. I'm Gucci. I got it in at Florida State. But if you're not, then DJ has to move on. But it's like – I guess there must not be some other particular thing that's open right now that's time sensitive because that would change yeah. things. You know, if all of a sudden some other school, Texas or something, you know, I don't they, I don't know why they would. Texas would never. But, you know, what I'm saying? if some other school were to offer him, maybe that would change things. But that just hasn't happened. And that is an alarm. It just has not happened. But sorry, guys. Uh, I wish we could tell you the exact day. Maybe Spear Addicts has an update for us. You know what? I need to send him a link. You're more than welcome to join us if you want, big dog. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know. I Okay, I'm still with DJU, uh, George. I don't know how you feel. I, I'm going to go with the kid who wants to be here as, as my guest. Not that... Um, I know anything personally because I don't. I don't talk to the kids. I can talk to other people. And a lot of people that I trust say one thing and then 
you know, another person says another. So I'm going to go <coughs> for you guys as the fans. I'm My prediction is just going to be the kid who I know wants to be here. That's all I'm going to say. I'm with him. Yeah, I just, I heard it. I've had, I've heard it was Cam. That's what the thing is. But I think it's pretty much, yeah, if Cam's going to drag us along for this time, it wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't take it and we end up with DJ. But it's like, how long do you wait? All right, you're on with the Renegade uh, Rundown. Hello? Yes, sir, you're on with the Renegade Rundown. Oh, hey, how y'all doing? Doing good, man. You got a question for us? Yeah, I was just uh, wondering, whoever we land at the quarterback position, whether it's DJU or Kim Ward, uh, who do you think that helps us land in addition to getting them, if anybody? Yeah, that's a good question, man, and I uh, appreciate you calling in. And again, guys, if if I miss your call, a lot of times when I'm on the line with somebody else, just keep it keep it coming if you got a call back, but we will get you all in, and sometimes I'll even call you back if I miss it. Look, I, I think Cam Ward is that guy. If you're going to get a guy that's going to attract all this crazy transfer portal talent to want to come play with somebody, that's going to be Cam Ward. Uh, he's going to be that dude, but at the same time, like Jen said, uh, like we've talked about a lot, you get who wants to be there. So how long is he going to drag this out? Uh, Spear Addicts, our guy Chris Frazier just said we're going to have something soon. So then this all could be a moot point. It would have been really nice if they would commit right now while we were alive. That would be just absolutely amazing. Uh, but they'll That's probably what wait. For him. <laughs> they will probably make us wait because, like, you know, there's a reason, you know, we're kind of hoping – that it would work out, but it's like a lot of people in the chat talking about they think Ward will go pro. Fine, if you're going to go pro, go pro. I think that's the kind of – that's the only explanation as to why this thing with Ward and DJU has lasted as long as it has because of that reason, because it's not like it's, you know, Ward picking between two schools. It's Ward in the NFL and DJU just saying, screw it, it's worth it, you know. I can wait, and, you know, if he goes to the NFL, I'm a null. If not, we'll compete for it. You're live well, with the and... Renegade Rundown. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, you're fine. Go ahead. Did you have a question, bud? Yeah, I do. I do. Can you hear me? Yep. You're live on the Renegade Rundown, buddy. Yeah, I just I want to ask, is it Danielle? Is that her name? Yes. I yes, sir. ask her, if she was lead counsel, what would she be shooting for? What would she try to get? And uh, what would she try to do? What kind of sum would she go for? What would she do? Whew. Um, I don't get to predict settlements much. When you get Appreciate you, man. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, I would, I would. First of all, I know the lawyer. I mean, the lawyers that are doing this, the Greenberg Trower, they're awesome. That is one of the biggest, most prestige firms in Tallahassee. Um, I would be doing exactly what they're doing. Um, they're suing for the right. Their facts back up everything they're doing. Um, I would also be doing a lot like they're doing and kind of, if you notice, like, uh, um, Senator Scott and, uh, Attorney General Moody did where they're even asking for emails between ESPN and the college football playoff committee in another aspect, aside from the ACC stuff. Um, I'd be trying to get to the truth, getting to get to discovery and force them to settle. What would I settle for? Uh, I personally am one of these people and I'm going to stick to this. And I know I've had other people say, you know, no, it's an ironclad contract. Both people signed, whatever. Contracts are beatable. Okay. I hate to tell y'all they don't, I mean, I don't know if these people, you know, some of these people say they're lawyers, but I don't know if you ever took like the contract defense as <laughs> part of the contract class. Uh, but yeah, I would probably settle. I'm kind of with what Jen was alluding to uh, the exit fee. Uh, but with but negotiated down with our damages that we've suffered from their bad faith and their violation of their contract. Um, would I settle for paying any of the media rights agreements, grain of rights stuff? Hell no. Hell no. That's a non that's a non issue mm -hmm. because I don't I do not believe it's valid. That's just not a so, Yeah, I absolutely one hundred percent agree. I think I don't think they settle for anything over what the exit fee would be. Yeah, that's that would that would be the last number I would go with before I'd walk out and yep. say, "See you, see you later. We'll deal with it." Yep. You know, and and depending on the actions that they're bringing, I don't know about North Carolina. I'm not licensed in North Carolina. If you're just going to be in front of a judge as declaratory judgment or how that works up there, or you know what's going to happen with that, 
Um, but yeah. Do you have any idea how they may handle that? Do you think they just have like multiple North Carolina attorneys, you know, on retainer, you know, in case that were to happen, like, obviously they're prepared, but I guess from a lawyer's perspective, um, how can they prepare to make that, you know, if, if it comes down to that? Yeah. And I didn't even check to see the law firm that signed their complaint. I should have. Um, yeah, probably. So. I mean, every university or, you know, has their own university attorney's offices that we contract out, you know, of course, for stuff like this, that's this big um, sometimes. And I don't know what the ACC does. If they're using their own people, I'm sure they have a legal staff apparently been a lot of fun um i can't even if they do i'm surprised mm -hmm. they let them get away with everything they have but um it, they probably contracted out with you know other some other big firm no doubt, no doubt. man i just ready to get out of this acc it's I am too. So, I'm pretty like, unreal I'm so danielle happy. what is the next likely step in the lawsuit and how long do you think it may take for a settlement i'm hoping not long um and i don't think i think a lot of people you know one thing that has really made me angry is people yelling about fsu was just you know last year we were just whining after the summer bot meeting then we were whining about the college football playoff our university just filed a lawsuit and is the first to ever challenge a gor so you know i i, I you were not allowed, we're ethically bound not to file frivolous lawsuits. So that's, I mean, they wouldn't do it if they didn't think they had, they were right. So that, you know, I, next step is going to be probably one of two things. They're going to try to uh, get this dismissed out of Florida or, you know, argue back. Um, they will have to file an answer to our complaint. Uh, they may move for change of venue. Um, we would likely do the same you know, um, because they filed, I just, I, I still cannot get past the fact that a lawsuit was filed by them that I would move to dismiss that. Yeah. And I've heard we got a, um, like the, the judge in Florida, the initial judge is supposedly a Florida state graduate. So how does that work? Uh, I heard actually, um, it, it really doesn't affect it that much because judges are, you know, judges and juries are sworn to be impartial Held to um, a standard. I did hear the judge was Judge Cooper. I practiced in front of Judge Cooper a very long time. He's a brilliant judge, um, definite uh, research, academician, uh, knows contracts law through and through, one of the best judges, and, and will be impartial to both sides. He will he will not hesitate to rule against somebody regardless of, you know, where he went to school or whatever. Um, he's very, he's one of the best judges I've, I've we've had here. So, um if that's true, and I don't know, I heard from a colleague today, uh, I, I think the suit here is in good hands. Not, in, not I'm not saying that in, in, in a way that benefits Florida State. I'm saying both sides will get a fair shake, too. Uh, yeah. But I think, I, think, I think the ACC's first thing is going to be to try to drag us to North Carolina. Yeah, for sure. I don't think, I think as long, that's all we need is a fair shake. And I think that's one thing that they're going to run into and realize is a problem with how they stretched out this grant of rights and made it so far, took it so far because this thing has changed so much. College football has changed so much from when this thing was kind of put together and the way the rest of it is done. I think, I think that'll play in FSU's favor. And, and yeah, like you said, it's just kind of so bar barbaric, <laughs> the terms it's like, one of these crazy old 360 deals that now don't hold up anymore because, you know, they were signed in, you know, ill gains and stuff in the music industry and stuff like that. I think it's just. If you read the complaint, if you just read the facts and just, it, I would almost have to do like a huge whiteboard flow chart to explain. We went from this to this and then they started going over here and doing this behind our back, but then they made us do this. And then ESPN comes in and gives us an ultimatum here and then we have to agree to, I mean, it is, it's the biggest cluster of mess you've ever seen and it's in bad faith. So no, there's not one completely, you know, cohesive signed agreement where both parties, because contracts require a meeting of the minds. So you don't have one because they had bad intentions from the get go. And it is shown by what they agreed to, the nepotism and everything they did. Um, it, it, I'm sorry, it just is. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. There's like, it, 
it, it couldn't be a clear, you know, departure in 2008. What the SEC did and what Florida State did. Florida State, like, just said, we're just going to stay with this mom and pop BS stuff and SEC stuff. We're going to market our stuff. We're going to get it professionally done. We're going to have amazing broadcast. We're going to have this network completely done by ESPN from the ground up. And we got stuck with Raycom and something that when did it, the ACC network actually drop? Was it like 2021, like nine years or something after like, when they initially, you know, brought it up? Well, because we had Phillips unilaterally agree to an extension with ESPN behind everybody's backs to a different year. Or was that the ultimate? I'm trying to remember because I get lost in it. And I'm and I'm a lawyer, like, but it's that convoluted because they they were doing stuff behind our back as well. So you got to kind of all put it. It was around. I thought it was was it 2019. I it don't was know. Late. It was so long, so far removed from when it was supposed to be done. I know that. And we've got yeah, another call. Yeah, 2020 is when ESPN and SEC oh. did their agreement. So um, I think we. I have a whole timeline. Oh yeah, we launched the ACC network. Um, in 2019, ESPN required um, was required to exercise, you know, um, the unilateral option by 2021 at that point. And the ACC commissioner went behind our backs and extended to 2025. And we got another caller calling in here. What can we do for you, brother? You're live on the Renegade Rundown. All right. Hey, um, I've been watching the show, like the show, like the format. Um, the question I have is, I know we've been focusing on the, on the grant of rights to the 2036, but everybody don't look at the 2027. And that 2027, that's what's um, forcible right now because ESPN haven't agreed to carry it to 2036. So if we look at 2027, if I'm correct, um, that should help us for as getting out of the conference and what the settlement is going to be. It should be a whole lot cheaper. Absolutely. That is a great point. And that's, you know, that's a big part of this lawsuit, you know, because it's that that was a bill of goods that was sold to Florida State as if those nine years were guaranteed, as if they were getting those on the back end, if I'm not mistaken. But we appreciate that call. And we're going to let Danielle speak on that. That was a great question, brother. Thank you. Thank you. It definitely is, um, because the twenty the 2016 um, amendment uh, allowed ESPN to shut down the ACC network. No guarantee of payments from them beyond 2027. That is the main issue. Uh, we were given the ultimatum then, though, that we had to um, agree to sign the GOR. And that's why I'm t- I keep yelling. There is no consideration for it. The ACC went to... The member institutions and according to FSU in this complaint and gave them an ultimatum that if they did not sign the new grant of rights going through 2036, they would no longer agree to any media deals with the ACC. I mean, yep. you want to talk about bad faith? That's bad faith. So you're right. 2027 is the bottom line. If anything's held enforceable, you're not going past that date. Yeah, um, that's- however. Is that kind of where the um the extra four hundred million comes into? Is that the difference? Like the hundred twenty is, or is that purely? Yeah, you no, know? it is. They like I said, they upped. They started doing the amendment weird agreement stuff. To, they upped the um exit fee whole deal to make sure they could keep everybody in place. Um, and then Maryland left. So then they had to even go beyond that. And that's how you start getting into all the grain of rights stuff. Yeah. So tell me this. Do you believe that ESPN gave that ultimatum? Or you think that was a bunch of bullshit by the ACC and just nobody called their bluff? Ooh, that's a billion dollar question right there. I could believe either or. To be honest with you, I could believe either or. And that's why if you do get to discovery, um, you're going to get your question answered because that's going to be one of the first things that show up in a request for production or interrogatories um, or a a subpoena deuces tecum for a deposition. Uh, Bring those emails. Give me those emails. Give me where this happened and who did what because Florida State has alleged it in their complaint. It's completely within the bounds to ask about it. Yeah, I just, I just, I'm, I'm left and the more I read and the more I read and the more I talk to people, 
the more I believe that it really is just all like I, I love to hate on ESPN and we can talk about ESPN and how they screwed us with the snub and how they've always been negative against Florida State. They've never really pushed the ACC. But I think all that shit started in the ESPN not wanting to push the ACC because of them sticking with Raycom and that old BS not letting them produce it the way they wanted to. Like, I feel like like ESPN wanted to bring ACC kind of into the new age, wanted to do this stuff, and the ACC was kind of playing blocker. No, we want to do it this way. We want to stick with this. We want to... We want to do that. So it almost feels like I just I don't see that ultimatum um, coming from ESPN. I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like maybe that ESPN gave some kind of ultimatum to the ACC. Like, hey, look, you're going to have to give up this Raycom shit or this or that, or you're going to have to get everybody to sign on to agree to, you know, to stay till 2036. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And yeah. then they misrepresented it to get those signatures. I know that's um, conspiracy theory that may be, you know, kind of far out there, but that's just that's just how it feels to me. It just feels I like it's that just there's completely of, bad faith. I, I, this is uh, there's so much in bad faith. And if you read the complaint, you can see it. I don't I don't see a lot of conspiracy theories about any of this right now because um, it's pretty much in black and white what happened. Kev Kev asks, do you know the time frame? that FSU is required to keep back emails? Um, I can tell you this. Uh, I'm not sure because I've never um, worked at Florida State. Um, I have worked at state agencies and I was a prosecutor for um, the second judicial circuit here previously. Uh, I was required to keep all of mine. They'll back them up on a server or whatever. I, I don't know. I've never heard um, of you being able to delete them in the state of Florida. We have the Sunshine Law, um, a very, very, very broad public records law, one of the, so much in the nation, um, anything's available. So, I don't know yeah. the answer to that question, but I don't think you're allowed to delete them, period. Yeah, and they have a way, like, even if you do delete emails, they have a way, unless you, like, completely destroy the servers and all that stuff. Um, a, a Dong Bay says, I remember Raycom broadcasted SEC football games at one point in time. Yeah, um, at the very beginning of the show, that's what we were talking about. It was in 2008 that they dumped Raycom um, and got with ESPN to develop, you know, the SEC network and all that good stuff. And, you know, ACC kept Raycom in business. John Swafford, his son Chad Swafford, was that, you know, Raycom at the bottom level. He's worked his way up to the VP. So, you know, not to repeat that again for the people that have already heard it, but absolutely they used to broadcast um, SEC games. But, uh, you know, the SEC got smart. They dropped them and, and they started getting professional stuff done and we stuck with the mom and pop. And, uh, you know, if if you followed Tom Hawk Nation, any of the big kind of blog sites back then, Bud Elliott, you know, Ingram Smith, these guys, they all they all told us what was coming, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Like they they knew exactly what was coming with all this stuff when it was first getting done. Anybody with any kind of business sense that looked at it back then, it was just I think it was like 23 million. And then the SEC was getting 32 million. I see people talking about, you know, why is the SEC's buyout clause so much different? Why is this? Because they they negotiated and they you know, they've got these shorter term contracts. It's a lot easier to buy out of a contract that gets renegotiated in two years than one that's not up for 30. <laughs> like, like what, what, what leverage does the ACC or any membership institution have on ESPN when you're supposedly locked into 2036 and nine years of that, it's only one way. They're not even locked in to pay you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm you know. really, it, it makes zero sense to me. None of it does. I mean, it's just, it's been a long time coming, and that's also raised questions. Well, why didn't anybody try to fight this before now? You also had a lot of behind-the-scenes things going on, new um, amendments and stuff. You also had FSU is getting new coaches, getting an entirely new administration. ACC was as well. We switched from Swafford to Phillips. Um, once the dust kind of all settled, uh, we got President McCullough. Michael Alford comes in here. We get... Um, you know, Coach Norvell, we, the dust kind of settles there, ACC as well, uh, because Phillips came in, then it was game on, you know, then it was like, it, it, that's, that's my explanation for them, and because, and also because more was known, 
at that point, especially after what has happened this year. Not that we didn't know it last year because we were yelling about it then too, but uh, this was just icing on the cake. Yeah, Jim Phillips, man, what a piece of shit. We've got a little thing we we play it once a show. Um, we got a pretty good relationship with Jim. We talk to him all the time, um, so we like to check in with him. How's it going, Jim? How are we doing? What are you up to, buddy? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. There's Jim Phillips for his weekly uh appearance on the show but yeah he's he's a complete and total lame duck there's nothing absolutely nothing i mean they came and they made this big to do about revenue sharing uh unequal revenue sharing like they literally actually wanted to keep acc in the conference you talked about last year that was the kind of big hub love they were going to possibly do something there and then what did it end up being they it came up with some it was like you know like thousands of dollars difference it was a complete joke it was a total waste of time you know and that's why we're at where we're at nothing changed yeah, yeah. not only that but they watched the pac 12 implode they watched the other big conferences and and i don't think people expected how bad the big 12 was going to fight back on that either and they did and went and secured teams and so did the big 10 you know like i said sec had already had it done the acc decides we're worthy of the cw network and stanford and cal no offense Stanford and Cal people, please don't come for me. Holy shit. These Stanford and Cal people, <laughs> these mugs, you think they're the like the craziest college football fans you ever thought about. Like, I didn't even know Cal fans existed. And like, I'm glad you brought that up because let this let's get this rant off my chest. You fucking Cal fans out there. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, well, well, all this stuff, and it's like, well, why are you mad? I seen somebody ask one of them, why are you pissed off? And they're like, well, you guys are trying to blow up our conference before we even get into it. It's like, no, no, no. You guys are brought in as replacements for us because we're leaving. Did, did you not know that? Are you under some misconception? They have to keep fifteen teams to keep the money coming in to keep that grant of rights and all that shit rolling. 14 teams, 15 teams, whatever the case may be. And they know they're losing at least Florida State. So that's why they brought your stinking ass in, Cal and Stanford. Why didn't they bring in Oregon State and Wazoo? Those are both best, fo better football schools. I have no idea what the heck Jen is doing down there. She is just moving her camera all over the place. Um, but, yeah, it's like, give me a break, Cal. Just, just, just. just butt out we don't need your information we don't need your your crying and stuff it's like it's not even funny like what are you doing it's the atlantic coast conference like what what could you possibly think when you, this, how do you feel about cal jen you got something for these cal bears out there uh, it looks like you no. finally got yourself situated yeah um my whole thing just broke like, oh no while i was trying to figure what? It out. your straw breaks now your tripod is done broke live <sighs> yeah it was like the thing that holds my cell phone just exploded and my cell fell like in the sink it just went all sorts of places <laughs> and i'm like okay i've got to pee i've got to do these things oh i'm sorry i shouldn't have said that on my tv but like let me take care of that. I'll fix some stuff and then nothing else would work. The internet is bad. I'm just like, I had to use my. Oh, yeah, I forget. Spot. You're not at home. I'm yeah. not at home. You're at your girl's so, house. Is she going to yes. come on the live? Or are we going to get to meet your girlfriend? Sarah Ann. Well, not your girlfriend, folks. I'm not trying to start any uh, no, no, rumors. No, there's but, uh, no. Sarah Ann. Jen's, uh, Jen's girlfriend is uh, yeah, moving back home to Memphis, so she had to go help him move today. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, oh, I was just, I just had to, it I had to rant it. about those damn okay. cow bears and their insanity online. Been fine. I haven't seen anything from the Stanford people, though. <laughs> there she goes. She's was that your son? Um, <laughs> I the other night, somebody from Stanford, Stanford mascot page actually posted FSU will never headline a conference. And then some Duke lawyer came underneath and started complaining that we always misspell words like Berkeley and stuff. I, if, I'm like, if that's the level of trash talking I'm going to be in in this with these people, please get me out of this conference now. Yeah. Delusions of grandeur. That's <laughs> absolutely right, buddy. That's what it is. 
it's crazy. It's like I just I don't think what could go through your mind to think like it was like your cow. You think ACC added like, and you can talk crap to Florida State for the. And somebody said earlier, they're just mad because they're going to re renegotiate and get less money. But it was always going to be that. That's the entire reason they added you. Florida State voted against you coming into the conference in the beginning, like, to start with. So what makes you think? <laughs> what makes you think? Um, but I also saw in the chat that apparently we have a couple more opt-outs for Georgia. Um, let me see who that was that opted out for Georgia. I believe. Damn, guys, you are killing it in the comments. Um, Jen is having all kinds of problems. Um, but, yeah, a couple more uh, Georgia Bulldogs have opted out, and it was big names. I believe it was um, the tight end. Did you see who Bob opted Bowers. out from Georgia? Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers and who? Somebody else pretty big. But that chat is just going crazy. I can't. Brock Bowers didn't travel with Georgia today to the Orange Bowl, but there's somebody else, guys. There was somebody else. Um, I literally just read it, but with all my explosions here. Um, um, you might want to go back to whatever you had before your cell phone coverage or whatever Jen is that Wi-Fi or whatever you're using isn't working Mims that's right Amarius Mims so they were definitely going to need him to start at left tackle. So that's a big one. Amaris Mims and Brock Bowers both opting out of the Orange Bowl. Um, and that's another thing. Like, they're just not <laughs> – oh, man, she doesn't have any issues. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah, it's not just us. People act like Florida State's the only team that's having opt-outs, you know. It's every other team. Florida State has – 15 three stars transferring out you know georgia has 15 four stars and five stars tra transferring out uh so it is what it is i'm expecting a good defensive showing i hate that you don't have you know a couple of your dbs but if there's any position you can afford to lose somebody i'm all about some azaria thomas i'm all about you know some young dbs to get out there um and play uh, excuse me, right tackle uh, for Georgia. But, yeah, they were definitely going to have him uh, at Georgia. Yeah, Miami is in the um, bad boys. What was it? The bad boys um, entanglement ball or something like that <laughs> up there in, in New York. So pretty knoll girl. I'm pretty sure they released a depth chart today that you can find if you go on the site or if you you look on X. There is a depth chart floating out around there um, that you can look at. But I think they, people yeah, have really even opted out mm -hmm. after the, the dad gum um, after the thing came out. Unfortunately, Jim, we got you back. Yeah. Yes, you did. So I was using the wrong Wi-Fi password. That was my fault. I was using my hotspot. Thus, you know, cut off everything. Yeah, buy Jenna tripod. Kev tripod. Kev Kev says, "Great show, great having uh -huh. Danielle on." Yeah, we definitely appreciate Danielle. She has been absolutely great, bringing an attorney's oh, pr yes. perspective and saying some of those long words for us that me and Jen get to pretend each week that we know. No, Jen, <laughs> Jen does a great job. I pretend that I know. Um, but we're on here for about another 22 minutes, guys. We usually run two hours. This thing is absolutely still slap full. We got 362 people in here. The number is scrolling across the bottom. You can call or text in uh, your question. Looks like we may have a text question in here right now. Um, no, that was just, you know what? The whole time it's sitting here. It was a text that had the two Georgia players. All I had to do was look down at my phone. But anyways, um, yeah, we sure appreciate that super, uh, Kev Kev. Um, and you've been a great support. You're always here, man. Can't dual play position players back up or wildcat out. 
Well, yeah, that was Lawrence Trofili, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he's out. But um, out. Deuce Span, <laughs> um, you know, Deuce Span still has a shot. Yeah, Lawrence Trofili and I believe Jerry and Jones, it's injuries with both of those guys. Renardo Green has, in fact, opted out to go to the NFL. Um, yep. Smooth criminal. Glad Renegade Reports is growing. We sure appreciate you, man. Um, but, yeah, Span was a quarterback, I believe, coming out of high school. So, I'm um, going to Illinois, I believe it was, out of high school to play quarterback. And then he ends up at Florida State as a wide receiver and has some real explosive potential. So, who knows? You could see some stuff like you saw with Jordan Travis when he was very young and just got that thing and would take off running with it and just had crazy explosion that people weren't ready for. Uh, maybe you can catch some guys napping if Span can maybe toss a couple over their head, this or that, if it comes down to it. But, guys, Brock Glenn is getting the start, and uh, that's who we're going to roll with. Um, like we said, this wasn't a complete surprise. This stuff with Tate Rodemaker, I think it had been going on for a while and they had made the decision about a week ago so brock had already been taking um some first team snaps and already had been mixing in throughout the last couple weeks of the season as we know so we're just gonna have to roll with brock and uh and see what happens jeff phil with the five dollar super chat do you think we can get a settlement done by july is it possible Mm -hmm. by july um uh, they're going to have to answer within 20 days, one way or another, uh, our lawsuit. And then we've got to deal with them as well. Uh, I mean, it is possible. I mean, it, it is. I mean, it, depending on how quick how quickly they want to get this over with. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, I mean, if they if they decide to fight back and drag it out as long as possible, because you got two courts going now, too, we got to deal with both. Um then it would be a little bit more difficult. I, but since it's declaratory judgment kind of stuff, I, I just, it, it is possible. I don't want to say it's not. All right. We got another question on the bat phone. What can we do for you, brother? You're live on the Renegade Rundown. All right. First off, great content, guys. It's always good. I, I kind of have two questions here. So, kind of why we have legal counsel. Um, like, so how will other schools? Like jumping on the null train and filing their own lawsuits affect ours? Is it like a strength by numbers? Um, and the other one, that like, what the other one is, uh, would it behoove FSU to get out alone, or, or is it like a supply and demand thing? Thank you. Appreciate it, man. You're welcome. Um, I, I don't. If they file suit, it, it it helps. I mean, it strength in numbers never doesn't help. But I mean, at the same time, I don't think I think FSU is alleged enough. And, and, and if you read FSU's complaint, we are alleging, you know, that they did this to all members. So, uh, yeah, it's up to them to sue for that. Like Jen mentioned earlier, you know, some silence is kind of very striking from somebody, some people right now. But, um, you know, I don't think it's going to matter. Ultimately, I don't. I don't think you need strength in numbers to bust this GOR. I don't think you need anything. I know everybody has floated that around and said that forever. But the GOR, if we're arguing it's invalid on its face anyway, then all the clauses you have about you need however many members to leave, that goes away anyway. So that's not going to matter in the long run. But, yeah, I mean, does it hurt, you know, to go in court and say, well, your honor, Miami and Clemson are doing the same thing? No, it doesn't hurt, but it's just not a requirement. It would be nice, but it seems like these cowards are basically just waiting on us to go crack the thing open. And then they'll come gnaw on its dying flesh when it comes time for them to jump to the Big 12 or whatever the case may be. But I don't give a shit. Just get us the hell out. Just get us the hell out. That's all I care about. Um, but, yeah, we've got some we got some fans of Jen in the chat. As always, happy holidays. Keep those um, questions in. Um, if you got any questions, we're going to be on here for about another 15 minutes. So make sure you get your questions in for me, Jen, and Danielle before we get out of here. We really appreciate you guys. Um, in case you missed it, Tate Rotomaker is opted out of the bowl game as long as well as Renardo Green, another one, opted out of the bowl game. And Jerry and Jones, injured um, and also injured, is one more player. Who was the other one? Jerry and Jones. Oh. Did you see Toby Lane? 
Toafili. Lawrence Toafili is the other one with a, a small injury who will not be playing. So there's, you know, a couple more players that we found out today since the depth chart has come out. Unfortunately, that will not be playing for Florida State, but also for Georgia. They will not have their big tight end in Brock Bowers or their right tackle in Amarius Mims. Um, so, guys, just enjoy this, this, this Orange Bowl. Get ready to watch it. Pull, your t- pull for your team. I think our defense – is going to do damn good. I don't think you have some high scoring game or kind of blow out either way. I think you end up with something, you know, 24, 17, 31, 24, some kind of, you know, something like that. Um, and who knows? We could, we could go out there and win it. I just feel like Adam Fuller is going to have something for Brock, not Brock Bowers for um, Carson Beck in that Georgia offense, even without Jared verse. Score prediction for the game. Do y'all have a score prediction for the game? No. We've been avoiding this like the plague, guys. We'll give you yeah. one. I'll tell you what. We'll give you one Friday, the day before the game. Yeah, that's when I'm. That's when I'm re- ready to go public with it. Like I'm not doing it right now. I'm just not. <laughs> We're still finding out who's who's gonna play and, and stuff. Um, but the economic revolutionist. No, get that shit out of here. Never in a million years. Oh, there come the. Of course, the Miami. Um, punks start popping up at the very end. RQ, look at you, man. You show up every time. Every time. They don't have anything better to do. Um, when's their bowl game, or was it yesterday? I mean, I know you saw your mentions. You were busy during Christmas, but I know everybody saw their mentions. It was just slap filled with nothing but Miami and Florida people crying all day long. Asking, oh my gosh, did you see this downfall coming? What downfall? 13 and 0. 13 and 0. Um, I mean, it's just insanity. And 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 guess what? They've gotten the narrative to work because everybody else is working with it. So we just have to be the ones to say no. Right. So Kev Kev has a question about shows before Saturday. So tomorrow we are doing um, the Voice of College Football live stream as we do um, every week. It's going to be me. Jen this week, since Mark's not going to be there, I'm going to be hosting. So Jen's going to take my spot on the panel um, along with Chris and James Coleman as long as they can make it, just like every week. Um, like I said, Jen's just taking my place and I'm taking Mark's place hosting the show. And then obvious, also our Friday show, as always, um, we will be live uh, right here around – Seven, eight, we usually, like last week we did it too because this news had first broke about the suit. So we reserve the right to change the time, but normally Friday evenings we go around six, seven o'clock. So we'll see how it goes. And of course, always um, Sundays at noon. So yeah, that'll be kind of a a reaction show to the Orange Bowl there. Um, And I I haven't even asked Jen, but we'll also be doing the, I'll also be doing the Voice of College Football um, post-game show which um, Jen is more than welcome to join me uh, if she would of like. Of course. Of course, George. I always want to join you. Always. Jen is a machine. Like, she is like, she's always ready to roll. And she's mm-hmm. always out there promoting the Renegade Report and making us look good on all different kind of shows, bringing in great guests. So we really appreciate you. And make sure you get out there and follow Jen on X. At Jen Santee, 1890. She was actually finally got her added as a contributor on renegadereport.substack.com. Now, I just got my YouTube pinned, so maybe we can get these memberships set up and we can get this thing going with the giveaways and stuff yeah. more streamlined. But still, um, until I get those up, you're more than welcome to go over to renegadereport.substack.com. Um, and become a paid member over there become a subscriber over there and you get the download only version of this thing the audio only version i mean that you can download over there if you're a paid subscriber and whenever i get the membership set up on youtube i'm not sure exactly how it works but you'll be comped over there we will make it to where you're a paid subscriber on both if you sign up uh, for the youtube membership so y'all cross your fingers for that hopefully we'll have that since we finally got our pin for our adsense account and uh, we will keep on going. Uh, Danielle had to step away. She's supposed to be right back. Um, but, again, we have another 12, 15 minutes, guys. So if you have any questions, there she is. Danielle just popped back in. Um, so if you have any questions before we get out of here, speak now or forever hold your peace. 
Well, one, Kev Kev, how did I run Tate off? I did not do anything. I have been very nice to Tate. I don't know what that means. Or What'd you I'm do, not, Jen? Oh, I don't know. I, do I didn't think you ran off Tate. I do do a lot, but I don't think that had anything to do with me. Um, yeah, I'm just reading some stuff. Sorry, guys. Danielle, you go ahead. Girl, you go ahead. We're lucky to have you. Oh, no, I already did. I just, I paused it for just a second. I had to go let my dog out of my room because they're like scratching down the door. <laughs> <laughs> my puppy is like my biggest issue whenever I'm like trying to get set up to podcast. I got to make sure I got her put up. She broke out a couple times and I was sitting here and there she is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Red Wine 65 says, as an NU fan, I'd like to see Northwestern sent to Ivy League, replace them with North replace them with Notre Dame, then add North Carolina, Clemson, FSU, Miami, Houston, SMU, and have 24 teams. That is an in interesting idea. I don't know if it's that particular way, but I think that's what you get. I think you end up with 24 or 25 teams in the Big Ten, 24 or 25 teams in the um, SEC, and you basically end up with a power two that's like an NFL with an AFC and an NFC. And, and you know, that's basically you have your six playoff teams from each one every year. That's basically what you're going to get. We thought it was going to take until, you know, 2024, 2025 for that to happen. But unfortunately, you know, it happened a year early with teams like Florida State and Clemson on the outside looking in. Um, you know, unfortunately, Clemson didn't go uh, undefeated or actually fortunately. It was Florida State that went undefeated and we're the ones that got screwed, which is just – Again, we won't get too into that, but just an absolute shame. And it's a reason why this ACC suit is happening, why it's rushed, and why we got to get the hell out of there. We had originally guessed February was, you know, when this thing, they could possibly decide to say screw it and throw it out um, to avoid discovery ever coming up. And you heard Danielle talk about that 20-day period. We heard what you – we had somebody ask kind of like what you guessed. But I guess what's the earliest you think that this thing could get dropped? Like when's it going to be the first opportunity for the two sides to sit down and like I guess for that sh that chance for ACC to like throw their hands up and say screw it, y'all can just walk or, oh, we're going we're going forward with it. Well, I mean, initially right now what they're going to do, like I said, we're going to have to deal with the venue issue. We're going to have to deal with, I mean, you're, there may be a motion to consolidate cases at some point. Um, I don't know how you're going to do that. Uh, both are, like I said, state law claims in different state courts. Uh, so, or they can file, you know, either a motion to dismiss or whatever motion they deem necessary. Um, and they are, they'll file an answer to the complaint, which is where they... You know, you either admit or deny all the allegations or without knowledge, therefore denied. You assert any of your affirmative defenses. Um, <clears throat> so they could do that, uh, given that they were bold enough to file a lawsuit over something that hadn't even freaking happened yet. I wouldn't doubt it. That they'll try to get it dismissed here. Um, what what FSU does in North Carolina, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I would I would move to dismiss it on those grounds alone. Um, because you didn't have an injury, in fact, and that's a legal term we use, at the time that you filed your lawsuit. You were speculating. So. Yeah, we've got a lot of questions coming in here through text. One of them is kind of interesting. I don't know if I can answer it. It says, would FSU announce they are leaving if the ACC tried to drag it out, particularly to miss to where Florida State would miss that August 14th deadline? Could FSU announce they're leaving, you know, if they're still tied up in lit litigation or that may be when we may have to get back on you. On that is an interesting thought. Actually, it's in the that is a way ACC could go. It's in the complaint. Um, and I, I don't, I've got everything like bookmarked and I won't be able to find it because I'm actually, you know, you can't find something when you really need to. Um, <laughs> you did ask in one of the counts um, that, hang on. I can try to find it now, but I, I won't be able to. FSU did ask in one of the counts that if um, – goodness gracious, I'm pathetic. I want We've to got read conspiracy it. theories in here, too. People talking about quarterbacks practicing for the Orange Bowl. Hang on. Hmm. Um, what? Okay. Oh, people. Lord. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's under the enforceable penalty. 
Um, count uh, Florida State requests entry of judgment against the ACC, declaring that the severe ACC withdrawal penalty and the ACC GOR, both individually and collectively, are not enforceable against Florida State. And that, and, the, and that in the event Florida State be deemed to have issued its formal notice of withdrawal from the ACC under Section 1.45 of the ACC Constitution, effective August 14th, 2023. So they're basically, in so many words, going back and saying, you know, if you find this under this, uh, go ahead and treat us as... Um, that we have left as of August 14th of this year, 2020. Good. So that's built in the case. As long as the case goes forward, they should be, you know, unless they lose it, so even they're good to announce. Out, I'm not worried about them announcing next August is, is yeah. what I was saying, what you were saying. I, that, I'm sorry to read all that legal stuff, but just so people could get the point, they're going back and saying this was already illegal just, Go ahead. And that they're citing ACC bylaws, I'm assuming, um, with that section. So that we're that we were already we were already deemed to have said we want out that back then and during the summer. Absolutely. Without a doubt. All right, guys, we're getting down here to the nitty gritty. We really appreciate you joining. Um, is there anything you guys wanted to cover before we get out of here? I know we've covered no. most everything. Well, if you guys have a question, speak now or forever hold your peace as we count down here to the very end of the show. Another great show. Really thankful for you to join us, Danielle. I know you just said something it's about sorry to read so the legal awesome. jargon, but like that's what we had you on here for, and you absolutely killed it. You were able to answer everybody's questions um, like we knew you would, which is why we wanted to have you on. Um, and here's the last question we'll get. Because this comes up every show. Why would the FSU not join the SEC? Why are they want to be in the Big Ten? Look, guys, you there's just... You don't go where you're not invited. There. Let you don't go where you're not wanted. Please and let you... me go on a rant about this. Go please. ahead, Daniel. <laughs> um, go ahead. Please. I've had to deal with this, and I have to deal with all these people that love to post a quote by Coach Bowden um, that says, you want to join the ACC because it was an easier path to the national championship. Yeah. They always leave off the first half of that quote where he says he wanted to be in the SEC, we had applied and they didn't want anything to do with us. Yeah. Um, and when we were independent, I will tell you, because, you know, my dad worked the field for FHT and I was around the program a lot. Um, he played every SEC team he could and went there when they wouldn't come here because they were too good. But he's like, I'll just beat them there. And he did. Auburn even paid us not to play them one year to get off their schedule. So SEC didn't want anything to do with us. All right. So by the time the SEC did come calling, the ACC came calling and it was not Coach Bowden's decision solely alone whatsoever. There was pressure from the administration on academics and basketball program at the same time. Um, given what has happened today with the college football playoff and everything else, why in the hell would we want to be in the SEC? Why in the world, especially when the Big Ten would pay Florida State more than the SEC would? Why in the world would we want to do anything to, to get back involved with the same people that we've been dealing with while the, uh, you know, ESPN treated the ACC as a little, you know, side, I don't, I'm not going to say what I want to say. It's a little side person. Um, <laughs> I'll say that, Jake. I'll say it all day. All in day. favor of their beautiful SEC. Why would we want to do that now? I mean, I, and I get it because Coach Bowden did want to go to the SEC at one point. I get it. His family's from Alabama. Coach Al Andrews is from Alabama. We're talking about the people that grew up under Bear Bryant and grew up with him. We get it. We get the whole geography. It, FSU always wanted to be there. Those days are over. Those days are over. We are in a different landscape. People coming at me with, we don't want to travel to the Big Ten, this and that. You're going to have to go to Stanford and Cal anyway. Give me Washington and Oregon. Okay? That's how I feel about it. And you're going to make more. I don't want anything to do with the SEC anymore. We're not laying down I with agree. the same bed of snakes that has been screwing us over year after year after year. Where do you think we would fall on the totem pole if we went to ESPN? Behind Bama, behind Georgia, behind this, behind that, behind Oklahoma, behind Texas. No. Like, are we going to be behind Ohio State and Michigan, you know, maybe at Big Ten? Yeah, maybe a little bit. But, no, they're going to promote us like we we're the coolest thing since Bryce sliced bread. They can't wait to get their hands on that Florida State shit. 
They're just and they're gonna establish. They're gonna totally let Fox, different. They're gonna let Fox set up a network in their backyard in the southeast. And give ESPN a hard time. Sign me up for that. That's what I'm here for. I can't wait. I think that relationship has soured so much that, I mean, do I think the SEC will start playing defense before this actually is announced? 100% I do. Um. But I think the SEC's number one target is North Carolina, and it's not Florida State. So why would Florida State even care about them trying to play defense right now? Thank you. Yep, that's basically it. All you got to do is understand that the ACC and ESPN work in hand, hand in hand. You watch any SEC or ESPN broadcast and see how they talk about Florida State. Then I want you to go flip on all the Fox content and look at how the Fox people talk about Florida State. And we've got one more caller. We're going to finish the show off. One more caller, and this is going to do it. You're live with the Renegade Rundown. Hey, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to call in. I had a question for Danielle. Actually, two. Um, and if I get a little bit too long-winded, by all means, cut me off. But uh, are there any liabilities that Jim Phillips potentially faces? You know, he unilaterally changed the – or actually acted against the uh, universities and didn't receive the two-thirds vote that was required for making any changes to the contract. And then also um, – what was the other thing I was going to ask? Well, first, let's just stick with the Jim Phillips part. Appreciate you, brother. We're going to hang up and let her answer for you. All right, thanks. Yes, absolutely. You you are able to not only sue the ACC, but you're able to sue him in, in a personal personal capacity as well, um, depending on certain factors. Um, the same comes in, in line with state actors. That's kind of how you get around state immunity laws and, and sovereign immunity. Sometimes you'll file what's called a Section 1983 claim under federal law and come after them, you know, personally. Um, yes, that's always a wide open issue that, that could happen. And discovery may very well lean towards that happening. I love it. I love it. Man, it's like you almost don't want to end this thing. We still got 310 people going, but I mean... How long are you going to go? We sure appreciate you joining, Danielle. We appreciate everybody, you know, that's, you know, hung out with the Renegade Rundown. If you're not subscribed, make sure you get out there and hit subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Help us get to 2,000. When we hit 1,500, we're going to do another cash giveaway. So who knows? Maybe we can get that done Friday um, or Sunday this week. But thanks again, Danielle. Uh, you want to let the folks know where they can find you at? Um, I'm on um, Twitter at D Kelly with an EY 21 and I'm on Facebook at Danielle Joiner Kelly. I'm on real talk and wave 94 um, in Tallahassee too. So if you ever hear me on there, then I'm there maybe doing a weather forecast, maybe talking about something else. Who knows? So uh, what is it? a Jill of all trades we have in, the, in our midst. <laughs> and, uh, of master of none. <laughs> so, there yeah. you go. There's more to that saying, though. It's not. It's not that simple. I, I, I'll remember it one day. But it's like, yes, we are. We are jack of all trades, master of none. But we're damn good at all those other things. Jen, you got anything you want to let all the people know? Um, not really. Um, just Danielle, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a good conversation. I loved everything you said. Um, I love your Twitter too, by the way, and. Mm -hmm. You know, Nathan as well. I know he's off now, but God, I am obsessed with that show. I mean, it's it's really a sickening um, obsession that I have. I've watched these guys. <laughs> like, I can't even, I can't even go into it. Like, you guys need to go do the, like, just go look at how fascinating of a channel that is. Because they've been calling everything, George, tell me if I'm wrong, from the get. Like, they know, F, like, I don't get it. I don't know how they know. It's not my problem. I just enjoy watching. So again, thank you guys so much. I mean, this has been so fun. I do apologize that like my equipment all exploded and like I'm in Louisville, <laughs> but I had an emergency. You know, It happens. It happens. Well, we love yeah. you. And it's all about the Florida State Seminoles 24-7. Get over to renegadereport.substack.com if you're not signed up over there. Hit the subscribe button. 
Gin Santi, eighteen ninety on X. We will catch you guys next time. Bye. Go Knowles. Go Knowles.